not possible. I mean, they're just there. They just, they don't go away. They're just there. They're in my life. They're in my family. They are there. And so, in order for me to walk my talk, I've had to learn to find a way that works to be in their space. And I've had to learn about setting boundaries in a peaceable way that matches what I say I value, rather than just cutting them out and deleting them, you know, previous strategies. <laughs> you know, and setting boundaries in a humane, peaceable way. I'm thinking of that book, um, Pulling Your Own Strings, that we, we studied several years ago, and how much it helped me, you know, because I had to learn... Also, how to value differences and to stop wanting them to be different. And even being open to the fact that they represent some value in the family and the world. You know, I tell myself the story about at least every other year about Sam and the ashram. Surely you've heard me tell it. I have to tell it again for myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's about this ashram of people who are studying together and they are just in the groove and except for this one person, Sam, you know. He always asks stupid questions right at the point where it's like really silent and, and there's this uncomfortable Sam asking a question, you know. And he, they're all vegetarians, but you know he's frying up bacon at the back of the ashram and smoking cigarettes and they can't stand it and they don't know why the guru isn't getting rid of him. Maybe he's just too good of a person, but anyway, one day the guru goes to town and they get together and they say, you know, Sam. Maybe you're not aware of how you come across to people or what your actions are doing to influence this place. And it's like, this is not your place. You need to get with the program. In fact, it would be probably better for the greater good if you left. And he's like, wow. And seeing the body of people supporting this opinion, he leaves. He goes. And the guru comes back. And as the guru places his first foot on the grounds of the ashram, he goes, where's Sam? He feels the shift immediately. And they're all like, we talked to him and he's left. And the guru doesn't even wait to discuss it. He runs down the street to get to the place where Sam is about to get on the bus. He said, Sam, don't leave. Come back. You are the reason why we are so great. I mean, without you, what is there to practice? <laughs> so I tell myself that story... Because of all of the Sams in my ashram. <laughs> who I would prefer to put on the bus. <laughs> but they don't go anywhere. And in fact, without them... You know what I mean? How shall I walk my talk here today? with these people and this life? How will I practice what I preach here? Not when I've got rid of everybody and only the pretty people survive, you know? <laughs> it's just not realistic. You know, so I've had to learn, second step, to care about people in a new way. I've had to learn how to begin to care about other people and their happiness much, much more than just tolerate them. And for me, that means to try to tune into what makes them them. I've had to learn how to care about people also without expecting them to care for me in return or to even notice. In fact, I've discovered, you know, that sometimes the best way of loving someone is to leave them alone. They like that. <laughs> leave them alone. And because I've had to learn that... Um, what is meaningful to me in caring is not universal. Uh, and um, 
the way that people express and receive caring is diverse and in many ways. I'm thinking about that book, The Five Languages of Love, and how it helped me expand the way I appreciate people to to expand my repertoire, to care about people in a way that is significant for them rather than impose my caring upon somebody to satisfy my need to be a caring person. Which takes some paying attention to what's going on. It's the next step and paying attention. I have had to learn how to listen to other people and then go one step beyond that. Not just listen, but to show interest in them by asking questions about what is important to them. Because I I discovered I wasn't really interested in people. Oh, but to choose to be interested, to become interested. Ah, And what I have discovered is that my giving time and attention through this Interest to people is sometimes the most beautiful act of love that I could ever express because I've learned that very few people are actually ever listened to. See, I've had to learn to slow down uh, and not be in such a hurry to talk about what is important to me and plaster it all over people. Because, you know, I used to think that showing, caring, and paying attention mean, meant coming up to you and giving you everything I had, all of my opinions and my ideas and my advice and sharing my wisdom. But I'm discovering, actually, that builds walls. And that, in fact, the experience was I was unapproachable. See, I used to be one of those people, and maybe you've met one or two of those people that, you know, grab hold of somebody else with their energy, with their eyes, you know, with their intensity, because I was in such a hurry to communicate with a torrent of words and information and experience, and I would talk to them sometimes without ever really listening to them. And then I got this job. (laughs) And people would do the same thing to me. At first, it used to drive me crazy, you know. But you know what I've learned? (laughs) I've learned to just listen, to just give my attention to it. And and I've learned to give my attention, even when I feel like I'm being captured, and to give my attention and listen as much as I can until I can't anymore. That's all that's being asked. You know, because I'm just seeing the other side of it now. I'm learning my paying attention. is not about me plastering my interests and sharing everything. Because I was guilty of too much self-disclosure. Do you know what I mean? And it wasn't showing paying attention or caring. It almost showed that I wasn't interested in who the people were which is what the next step is about, praying. So much more than just paying attention and being interested in what another person is, but supporting them. You know, because I'm beginning to wonder if loving other people is even possible if I can't make space for their dreams in my world. Because I've started to really look at what I want for other people. And... Does that match what they want for themselves? Because I've noticed that I have a lot of opinions about what people should do and think and experience and where and go. And I'm trying to get that out of me so I can be with you and I can look at you in the eye and agree with you about what you want and pray with a full heart for what you want even if what you want I don't want the same thing for you or for me 